Okay, so <coughs> some applications of the central limit theorem for sample means. Here's a really good question that gets us started. And I made one just like this on the homework. Um, and we'll have an upcoming quiz. And I don't know if it'll be the exact one, but you can bet on at least two questions like this on your quiz. Um, the population mean annual salary for plumbers is $46,700. Okay, so that means that if you take all the plumbers, that's how much they make a year if you average it out. Random sample of 42 plumbers is drawn from the population, and then they do the means of the sample. Um, what's the probability that that means is going to be greater than $44,000? And assume that the standard deviation, that's what that symbol rho stands for, assume the standard deviation is $5,600. Now, the first thing I always like to do is to write out the, unif the well, this is not uniform, but the normal distribution for the sample means in this particular case. And I can tell it's that because of the X bar in the front instead of just an X, tilde normal, then mu of X, which is the average of the X's, but then this at the end. Normally this would be the standard deviation, but as soon as I make it about sampling error and standard deviation over the square root of N, I know we're talking about the central limits theorem, okay? And then I plug in those particular values in here because once I have them plugged in here, then I know where to place them and what's going to go with them, okay? Think of this as, you know, you wash your dishes in the dishwasher, and then you put all your dishes back so that they're in the proper place, and then when it's time to cook, prepare, and eat the final meal, you know where everything is. So this is the stage where you're putting back from the dishwasher, okay? The average, it says, is 46000 $700. So I put that here. And my standard deviation is 5,600. So that goes in the numerator. But it says that there's a random sample of 42 plumbers. And that's why I have my square root of 42 down here. Okay. Um, I calculate exactly what 5,600 divided by the square root of 42 is. And that is 864.099. Well, that's not exactly what it is, but it's close enough. Rounded off to the third decimal place. Okay, so what this does is now it's like having everything put back where it belongs. Now we can cook the meal knowing where things are rather than going crazy looking all over the place for stuff. Okay, now the z-score would work out to be using the z-score formula. Okay, 44,000 because it says what's the probability that the salary is greater than $44,000. So I need to know the area under the curve for greater than $44,000. Now remember, it's going to be negative because 44,000 is actually less than the mean. I get negative 3.12 when I crunch those numbers. Then I have to go to the table or there's a calculator technique. We'll talk more about that in a couple of minutes. So um, when I look at the table and I look up negative 3.1 on the left column and across the top 0.02, I get 0 0.49910, okay? And then that is toward the left, and I also have to add in the right half, which is 0.5, and I get 0 0.99910. Or I can go second VARS, normal CDF, and for the lower, I put in negative 3.12, let me just type this all out and then I'll go back with you again so you can see better. For upper, I put 99 and I actually changed that to, um, from now on I put in 10 up arrow 99. Basically, I, I want to get the highest number possible. Um, and 10 up arrow 99 is as far as the calculator will go. And for the sampling error, we said before that that was um, the standard deviation divided by the number of samples. Oh, let me go back. When I plug all of that into the calculator, I'm literally going to go into my calculator and I'm going to hit, um, calculator being a TI-84 plus, I'm going to hit second VARS. And then the second one down says normal CDF. So I hit that. So second VARS, normal CDF. That's what this is telling you to do. I hit the second button, which is the blue button on the left. Then the VARS button, which is found just below the four key pairs that go up, down, left, right on the right-hand side. So I hit second VARS, which is all about distributions. And then 
I hit normal CDF, and then it'll tell you lower. So my lower, we just calculated this out with the Z-score, would be negative 3.12, and my upper would be um, ba -ba 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 -ba, 10 to the 99, which my answer will be slightly different than this. And then I just hit enter, enter, enter all the way around, and I get point nine 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 zero nine five six and so on and so forth okay so my answer will automatically pop out and i did that one using z scores uh, and as time goes on we won't use z scores for this and we'll just use the calculator and it's actually gets even a little easier than what we just did okay all right next up example 7.1 we have an unknown distribution has a mean of 90 and a standard deviation of 15. Samples of size n equals 25 are drawn randomly from the population. Um, I wish it would have done 30 because the central limit theorem really is supposed to be used for samples of 30 or more, but we'll go with 25 on this one. Um, find the probability the sample mean is between 85 and 92. Give that a shot. Do stop and start. It may be, you know, it's a little confusing. Keep in mind, we're going to do two days on applying this formula. We're going to do today and we're going to do the next time. So give it a shot and we'll go over it in just a minute. And eventually we're going to work our way toward using the calculator more and more and more. That's why I sent out the email that says who has uh, availability of the graphing calculator. These are so much easier to do on the graphing calculator. Go ahead. Okay, so here's how we can do this on a graphing calculator. Um, let x equal value from the population. The population asks you to find the probability for the sample mean. We know that because it's x bar and it talks in here about the mean of 90, standard deviation, sample size. Sample size is a big indication that we're going there. So uh, x bar, this is the um, central limit theorem mean normal curve uh, notation. Um, X bar tilde N for normal curve. The mean is 90. Here's my standard deviation of 15. I hope you're seeing my cursor here. And then it's always the square root of N on the bottom, which is 5. Okay. So again, this is putting all the dishes and all the cookware where it belongs. And now we're going to cook up the answer. And the way we're going to cook up the answer is we're going to go to our graphing calculator. We're going to hit second bars. And then we're going to go down to the second one, which says uh, normal CDF. So once again, second VARS is the second button, the blue button on the left-hand side, second button down. And the VARS button is just underneath the four-way directional up, down, left, right arrows. And if you do second VARS above it, it says distributions. And it's all about distributions, this being the normal distribution. We go down to the second one, which says normal CDF. And then it, we hit enter, and it comes up with lower. What do I want to put for lower here? I want to put 85. What do I want to put for upper? I want to put 92. What do I want to put for average? Well, the mu or the average is 90. And what do I put for my standard deviation? I like to literally write out 15 divided by square root of 25. 15 divided by second square root. 25. Now, I know that you could have just done 3 because that's what it equals, but a lot of times you're going to get expressions that you can't simply reduce off the top of your head. So that's why I, t I write in exactly what it says, 15 over the square root of 25. Then I hit enter, enter again, and I get 0.6997. So using the graphing calculator is really simple. Let's see now how much more difficult it is to do on your own, okay? There's really two issues with it. First off, it's a lot more work. I want to find the z-score for 85. And here I do all the work to get a z-score of 85. Okay? Using the table. And then I do all the z-score to get a work a score for 92 to get a table. And that total area, you have to add those two up. And you get 0.6969. Now, that's actually slightly different than the real answer because everything's rounded off in those tables. And we're not taking the exact value in the tables. We're not doing this big, long process called interpolating. So we're not going to get exact answers. The more decimal places we go out, the more error we'll find in our answers, which is why 
it's so much better. It's two reasons why it's so much better to use the calculator. First off, I will not get that error. Second off, um, it's so much quicker and easier to use. So once again, what do you type into your calculator? You're going to type in second vars, then go to normal CDF, and then the lower value you want is 85, the upper value is 92, the average, the mu is 90, the standard deviation is 15 divided by square root of 25. You just type that in exactly what it is. And then you hit enter and enter, and it'll tell you 0.6997. So the calculator gives you a more accurate answer, and it's so much easier on you, which is why we are segueing into using the calculator fully. Quicker, easier, much simpler to do, no error. Here we go. Let x be a random variable with a mean of mu equals 20 and a standard deviation of 4. A sample size of 64 is randomly selected from the population. What's the approximate probability that the sample mean of the selected sample is less than 19? Okay, so less than 19 would mean that the lower limit would be 0, and then the upper limit would be 19. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so um, I wrote the general format for our uh, central limit theorem form of the normal. And it, again, you don't have to memorize it because we do take all of your tests at home, but it's something that should be readily available to you. I mentioned at some point, I think to this class, that uh, take a picture of it with your cell phone and then have a folder on your cell phone for statistics formulas, and then you can look this up if you want. Underneath, you can label as, as to what it is, and so on and so forth. Okay, so um, the sampling error is what this last part of the formula is, and it's the standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of samples. So in this case, um, x bar tilde, the normal, the mean is 20, and this has a standard deviation of 4, but I have to divide by the square root of 64, because the sample has 64 pieces in it, or people in it, or whatever you want to say. If I do square root of 64, it's 8. 4 divided by 8 is 0.5. So if I do my z-score of 19, because um, that is the upper end of this, minus 20, I get a z-score of negative 2. Right? That's negative 1 over half, which works out to be negative 2. Now you can go to the table or the calculator. If you go to the table you're going to get 0.47725 plus the right half, which is going, to, and then you have to subtract it off. You consider the right half. Um, that gives you a total area of 0.97725. By total area, I mean that's from 19 to the right-hand side of the curve. So then I have to do 1, which is the total area under the curve, minus that area you just computed, which is 0.97725. You could have done 0.5 minus um, stuff in there too, but you get 0 0.02275. You can do that with the table, but as we're learning, so much quicker, so much easier to use the calculator. On your calculator, you type in second vars, normal CDF. For lower, you type in zero. For upper, you can type in negative two. Now, now let me rephrase, let me talk to you a little bit about this, okay? I'm doing, there's two different ways to do the calculator. In time, we'll never do it this way again, but I wanted to show you this in the beginning about the power of z-scores. The lower is 0 and the upper is negative 2 because the z-score was negative 2. And then it'll say mu equals 1 and standard deviation or whatever equals 0 and just hit enter, enter. You do that and you get right away to the point 0, 0.02275 or you could do it without the z-scores. And I would suggest we do it this last way without the z-scores. This is the way that I would do it from now on because you don't need to calculate z-scores. The calculator does it for you. Second VAR is normal CDF. The lowest score is 0. The high that you're looking for is 19. The average or the mu is 20. 4 over the square root of 64. Again, I do that not because I couldn't figure out that it's equal to 2, uh, to 0.5, but because... Um, I don't want to 
later on when I don't get a perfect root like the square root of 64 is 8, if I get the square root of 65, I don't panic and I know what to do. So again, just type in second bars, normal CDF. The lower is 0, the upper is 19, the average is 20, and I just type in exactly what I get for my sampling error, the standard deviation divided by the square root of the total numbers in the sample, and I get right away to the solution 0 0.02275. I don't need to worry about anything being slightly off, and it's clearly the quickest and easiest way to get to the answer. Okay, um, we have time, I think, to get the last two done, so let's do this one. A little stop and start here. Okay, so again, let's get everything, all of our, doc, all of our ducks in a row, that is, all of our dishes put away so that we're ready to cook up the meal. And this gives me a mean of 4.5, and this is why for I always like to type it in as is. The standard deviation is 1.5 over the square root of 40, because there were 40 companies in the sample. Okay, I could do z-scores, no problem. I'll leave them up here for you to do but I'd much rather go to the calculator, all right? Um, if I go to the calculator, I could do the calculator with z-scores, but the best way to do this is to go to a calculator and just put in the numbers as they are. Oh, I didn't even put down putting in with the numbers as they are. Here's how you put them in if you're gonna do um, to the z-scores on this one. Ready? You type in second bars, normal CDF, and then for lower, type in four, for upper, type in five. For the mean, you're gonna type in 4.5, and for the um, the last place, they call it the standard deviation, it's the sampling error, it's 1.5 divided by square root of 40. And then you just hit enter, enter, and you will come out with 0.96514, okay? All right, next one up, last one for today. Give it a shot, go ahead. Okay, here we go. Now, um, the length and time and hours it takes an over 40 group of people to play one soccer match is normally distributed with a mean of two hours, so that means the mean is two, standard deviation of 0.5 hours or a half an hour, a sample size is 50. And all of that information is going to be fit right into this um, format, okay? Find the probability the sample mean is between 1.8 and 2.3 hours. So here we go. 2 and then 0.5 over the square root of 50. And just so that you know, that's 0 0.0707. If I did it with z-scores, I can go to the table. Uh oh, I found another problem with tables. 4.24 is not even on the table. God, we can't even go there with tables with this one. So what do we do with the calculators? Well, we could do it with z-scores and put in my lower as negative 2.83, my upper as 4.24, and then they just leave it as mu is 1, and I think standard deviation is whatever, 0, zero. but the standard deviations were covered by the z-scores. And... The mu is basically for the purposes of the normal graph. This is not the best way to do it. The best way to do it is to ignore the system that I just used there and go with what we're going to put right here. Ready? You go to normal CDF, 1.8 is the lower, 2.3 is the upper, 2 is the mean, and 0.5 divided by the square root of 50. And when you kick it out, it'll say 0.9977, which, by the way, is what the other technique rounds off to. So there are two ways to do it on the calculator, but I strongly, I can't emphasize that more than I'm trying to get, strongly recommend that you use this technique here that we have in the gray box, bordered by the um, deep autumn red. Normal CDF, the lower one that they want is 1.8. The higher one is 2.3. The mean is 2, and then we have for its standard deviation, we're going to put in 0.5 over the square root of 50, and then you just hit enter a couple times, and you come out with 0.9977, and you have your answer 
right away. The probability that the mean time is between 1.8 and 2.3 hours is 0.9977, which means it's darn close to guaranteed. All right, this is the first step of learning to apply the central limit theorem. We'll have another lesson on how to apply it in lesson 15.